another On Your Mark show on 105.4 RPWP, thepostradio.com, sponsored and powered by Epic Sports Apparel. With the On The Diamond segment, we're going to feature and tell stories of the black baseball player. Myself being a black father with a black baseball player, uh, there's stories out there to be told. Uh, I kind of got this itch a while ago, and now I have the opportunity to tell that story. And our guest tonight is Frank Webster. He has two uh, young men that played a game of baseball, one that's uh, in college now, and one that's going to be one of the better baseball players in the area when he uh, he's just starting to reach his peak. Um, we'll talk about Zion Webster and Aviel Webster, who are his sons. But Frank was also a coach uh, at times in his life and still coaches in the sense that, uh, you know, you have to be a coach on and off the field for uh, your players, uh, for your children. Or when, when, when they get to a certain level, sometimes the coaching stops, but it never stops at home. So we'll bring Frank Webster in. Talk to him, talk to him about his sons here on the On The Diamond segment here on the On Your Mark show. Frank, come on in. Hey, what's going on, Mark? Good man, to be here. Man, appreciate you joining me tonight, man. This is the story that we want to tell. Uh, you have two uh, fine young men that play the game of baseball. Uh, you know, the black baseball player in the eyes of at the major league level has kind of been uh, taken away from the game. And this particular segment, we want we want to highlight and, stem, and and get the black baseball players some shine and let them know that hey, we still play this game, and talk about their stories and what it takes to get to the next level. So, uh, talk a little bit about yourself, and uh, we'll start with Zion since he's the oldest. Uh, no problem. Yes, Zion is my uh, oldest ball player right now. He is away. He uh, graduated uh, earlier this year, and he decided to join. Uh, a uh, post-grad prep program. They're kind of new right now in the uh, in the college collegiate baseball world. And what he is doing now is prepping himself to get better, to be more prepared for 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 college coaches and what they what they're looking for. Um, when when COVID hit, it it threw a wrench in everyone's plans, especially my son. And uh, he hadn't uh, committed to a school, so we were hemming and hawing. And then once we were able to... Hey, Frank, I mean, contact- I mean to stop you. Come into the camera where we can see you. Can't see oh, your face. Sorry. Yeah. Now, there so, you go. Go ahead. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> once we started... Uh, once, once we started... Once we started getting back with the coaches and everything, we started talk, talking to, to JCs mostly because, uh, you know, the D1s and D2s, they were shut down. And the JCs come to find out they had stacked their programs that just like the NCAA and uh, other collegiate organizations, sports organizations, they gave an extra year to the, to, to the student athletes. And now rosters were packed. And uh, so we had to make a decision does he design go to a to one of these uh, JCs or you know or an NAIA school or something and sit behind seventy other young men waiting to get a shot you know not being able to practice and not really getting any playing time or do we take a chance on something new and so uh, we decided we to to uh, to take this chance and so far it's do, he's doing really well he's been progressing. And uh, he's he's doing really well. And let's take a step back and go back a little bit. Uh, yourself uh, and myself, uh, you know, we both had our sons on the same team for a little while. So this, you know, this isn't new to either one of us. But uh, talk about Zion's development. You know, starting when he was a younger uh, player before he got to high school, and how integral you were in that. Yes, sir. So we first started actually in uh the last year of his eligibility for coach pitch so he you know rel- you know relative to the other kids his age he started baseball pretty late so uh we we started last year coach pitch i was his first coach and uh we had a pretty successful season i actually had uh, some of the guys from work we we all coached that that first team and we had a great time and won games and we all learned the the, the the basic points of uh, baseball together. And so we did, uh, just like everyone else, we did uh, rec ball for a couple of years. And then uh, 
he really voiced his uh, enjoyment for the sport. He said he wanted to take it to the next level. So we started going to uh, select tryouts. We finally got picked up by a team before you and I got together, Mark, and we played there for a year. That was a struggle. We, didn't, we won one game, and it was the last game of the season. As a matter of fact, it was against you guys. I don't know if you remember that. I do. We, we, yeah, it was our <laughs> last game, and Zion actually – Recorded the last out. The ball was uh, hit to second base and was thrown to him. And right. we all jumped and acted crazy because that was <laughs> our first win. Yeah. And then um, after that, we, uh, we we bounced around a little bit. And then we finally um, I got together with, with Marco and you. And, uh, you know, we were off and running from there, which was, to me, was our greatest uh, select ball experience. You know, we we learned so much from that, and you know, we grew. I think you, uh, you, me, and Marco, and the boys, we all grew as coaches, players, and and I consider you guys family. So you know, you, you we, it was a great experience for us. Well, okay. so then go ahead. Before Sorry. we go a little bit deeper, uh, you know, I've been seeing. I'm, I know you're pretty heavy on social media. Some of the things uh, about Daddy Ball. And uh, I know that you can uh, probably vouch for this. And I, I can say this to myself. When my son, when DeMarcus was on the team together, I didn't really coach him. I always let you, Marco, and uh, Coach Nick have him. I never really said anything to him. I never uh, thought it was daddy ball at all because I thought that you guys were knowledgeable and great coaches and motivate him and worked with him in his development up until he got to high school which I know he, when he was ready to go to high school, he was ready, you know, because he was prepared. You know, I think if he had been with another team, it might have been different. But just talk about the the so-called daddy ball thing that everybody's, you know, enamored with. And I don't think between that team that we coached uh, together, we didn't have that problem because each one of us had a, uh, a son on the team, but we never really were on our sons. You know, each one of us took turns coaching the other son and, you know, you guys were an integral part in his development as well. Exactly. I, that's what we did. And we really never sat down as coaches and said, hey, Mark, I'm not I must hand. I'm going to be hands off with Zion. You get on him or Marco, you know, with, with, with Marco Jr. We never did any of that. I, we just knew that it wouldn't be right to 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 coach coach up our sons and let the other young men, you know, stay there on the wayside. So I think it was just unspoken for us. We, you know, and, and we made it work. Right. We made it work. So that daddy ball thing though, I think this is me personally. I think a lot of parents who are, ex whose expectations exceed the reality of their child's skills, use it as an, use it as an excuse. Now I'm not saying it doesn't happen. It does when when the dad is the coach and his son is always the shortstop and batting first or clean up and you know and gets the primo positions and everything and gets all the shine uh, yeah it does happen but more often than not it doesn't you know it's just to me it's just using it as an excuse by parents when their child isn't progressing the way they think they should or their child is not as skillful as they would hope and instead of confronting their 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 child they put they take it out on the coaches who has who has a child on the team so that's that's where I stand on daddy ball well I agree I, I never was uh you know coaching um my son at that age you know I, I'm not the most baseball person uh coaching wise but you know I myself was my role was more of a motivator you know get the guys ready for the game hype them up you know I'm a football guy by nature so baseball I've learned as he's progressed at the time because you know, I soak up everything that he's doing from lessons to any, anything coaching-wise. You know, I, I'm usually pr pretty much in the background, and I always looked at it that way in that sense that I don't need to be in the way because if he's here to be coached by someone, then let them have him. You know, we can talk later. If he has a question, you know, I'll try to find out about that. Now, let's let's turn to uh, by the time Zion gets to high school, uh, you know, he's going into Burleson High School. Uh, I think he was playing for the DFW uh, twins at that time and what was that experience going into high school for him so our last year together with with the with, with Cowtown Outlaws uh that that really prepped him to get ready to for the high school trial even though we never really knew because just we were just like you 
this was uncharted territory for us. So what we did come to find out really prepped him for that. And we didn't realize how much of a separation there is between the young men that play, mostly play rec baseball and those that play select baseball, how much more select baseball uh, preps you for that. So we, uh, he made his team. Uh, it, it, it was uh, the competition to make the team was very strong, a lot stronger than what I, what we, what we uh, thought it would be. There were some sleepless nights waiting to see um, if he was going to make the team or not. We were all nervous. And uh, when we saw his name on that list that he made the team and for him to show up at practice on that Monday, we were really excited. So, so we got the, uh, his freshman uh, high school baseball season started. And just like with anything, with select ball, we were used to playing every weekend. Zion always played, always started. Or if he didn't start, he would come in. We played a lot of games. And uh, freshman ball, you know, it's something new. And it I'm not going to say it was a letdown, but it was different. We only played like 10 games, and then boom, the season was over. So, you know, it left us kind of, you know, wanting for more. And so we uh, joined a, uh, a, summer, a summer team. We tried out for that. We actually tried out actually before the the um, the, the uh, high school season started, and our, and then we hooked up again. You and I hooked up again, and uh, both our sons were on that team, and that was an experience within itself. <laughs> right? <laughs> no doubt, no Ooh, doubt, man. You know, but you know what? I say like this, Mark. We we learned from it. Zion learned from it. I learned from it as a father, and you know, and put took some lessons and put them in my back pocket to help coach later. And we learned and grew from that. And uh, we played with them for the summer and then the fall going into his sophomore year, sophomore high school year. And then uh, we decided to make a change after that. So, and then we, we were just off and running after that. Now the, the big thing conundrum uh, that a lot of people go through is trying to select the right organization that they feel uh, fits uh, your player uh, to the team. Uh, you want the right coach, and you want to make sure he's learning and progressing at the ra- rate he should be based on his talent, what you can't see. It's kind of hard to, I guess, uh, navigate your way through those type of things. And sometimes, uh, I think I saw something on social media this week, someone uh, changes every year, like four times in the last four years. Uh, yes. How hard is that uh, to navigate those waters, just trying to figure out where he needs to be? Because we're we're talking about next level. You know, we're – often have talked through the years about trying to get, you know, our boys to the next level and then being black baseball players, uh, they have to work extremely hard. You know, we're, we're, we're in Texas. So, uh, you can talk about that as well, uh, trying to navigate that. And then, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, we were the only black families at these games or we don't want to one or the two black flam- families, uh, in an organization. So talk about that as well. Yeah. So it, it's tough. It's tough being in a playing a sport where where you don't see a lot of people that look like you. So you don't have a you know you don't have ready uh, you know figures to emulate on the high school level. So you know it, it, it was tough. I I sat down. I would talk to Zion, and we would or my wife and I would talk to him, and we would ask him how how does it feel being basically the only black face on your team. And he said it was tough for him, but once the game got started and he was in between the lines, you know, he didn't think about that. So, you know, but we've prepared him to, 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 for all the uh, stereotypes that were going to come. I remember, I remember he told me when he was on his way to the tryout for high school uh, ball the first time, uh, one of his, uh, classmates saw him and said, oh, I didn't realize you played uh, baseball. I thought you would have played basketball, you know? So, you know, that, that stereotype there, like what is this black kid doing playing uh, baseball? And so, but he was able to overcome that. He was able to overcome that. And so, you know, so, and, and we still talk about it. He knows the reality of it, that he's looked diff- at differently. It's, um, it's a more stringent level. He's not allowed to, uh, because of the color of his skin, he's not allowed to, to show the emotion that a white or Latino uh, ball player can. So it, he, he works, he works hard. He works very hard at it though. So, you know, he's, he's, he's getting past that. So, 
Now, and moving on to the, you know, to trying to find the right team, I saw that post too that you were talking about where um, uh, a family is moving, has been on four different teams in four different years. What I've learned about going to, you know, to these summer ball uh, programs and high school, you have to pick the right program for your child that's going to be in the best interest of your child. You know, you have to sit down as a family and discuss what goals you're looking for. Where are we trying to go? Are we trying, are we trying to get us in the best position to see college coach, get college coaches to see our, your, our sons play? Are we just trying to, you know, just get on, get on the team, have some fun and see where it takes us? You know, things like that we have, to, we have to discuss. Sometimes programs might have the, good, uh, the best intention for your child, but then when you get there, the reality is it, they're not. It's, it's it's not it's not happening. So you have to make a change. If it sometimes if it means that you have to team hop, I guess that's the that's the the term. If you have to team hop until you find the best fit for your for your child, then so be it. Because at the end of the day, once your child leaves that organization, you know that's that's it. You know they're they're moving on to they're moving on to the new player. Your child, your son is uh you know it, it, has he been prepared to get to 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 his next goal and so i i don't have a problem with it the only issue is is if uh, again it goes back to who what is the issue is it your son's skill level is not where it needs to be so he's not getting the right playing time or is this organization just not the right fit for your son and you know you, you can't worry about the stigma that everybody else has about you you have to have your son's best interest at heart all the time, 24 seven. So that's, that's where I stand on that. Now uh, talk about some of the things that you guys did outside of uh, just, you know, regular practice outside of team practice with the high school and uh, also with uh, his uh, travel team, uh, because okay. that's important. I think in, in his development, you know, it's, it's and I, would tell any child this or anybody that's especially trying to go to the next level. And, uh, and I'm, I sure, I'm sure you agree with this as well. Uh, that baseball in particular is an everyday sport. It's something that you have to do regimentally. Uh, muscle memory is a big thing that, you know, coaches talk about, uh, but you know, extracurricular things. When I say extracurricular, I'm talking about lessons, uh, finding the right person to, uh, train them, not just, uh, physically, but baseball is so mental. You have to be a step ahead of the game uh, when you're when you're on the field. Um, so talk about some of the things and searching uh, for your sons to get the right uh, the right coaches in their lives and the right uh, extracurricular uh, coaching. Exactly. I uh, I equate baseball to regular school. So you go to school and you know you you learn the lesson for the day, and that's that's what I equate baseball practice to. OK, so then the teacher will assign you homework. And so that's when you have to come home and you you have to do the work. So you come home. Hey, go hit off the tee, go play catch, go long toss, you know, take some grounders off the bat, things like that to just to keep, like you said, to develop that muscle memory. Test day, you know, you put all everything together, see what you've learned and then test. The test is what evaluates how much you've retained. And that's what game day is in baseball. It's, it's the test. So you're out there, you know, what have you done? And you'll see it really quick the young men that have been, have been preparing all week and the young men that just went to practice and then didn't do anything. And, and, and it shows very quickly. And, and the coaches see that. And that tells them of what type of work ethic you have away from them. So for for my boys we learned that we learned quickly that it just can't be practiced you know when you're just having two or three practices a week out of out of seven days and that's just an off season you're going to need more so we we tried some things you know i did pretty much just like everybody else nowadays hit up youtube trying to find lessons this and that and then somebody said something to me that really hit me so when you when you get sick or you need surgery, do you go to YouTube to learn how to perform that surgery or do you go to a professional? And, you know, and I was like, well, you know, you know what the obvious answer is. Right. And so they said, well, why don't you find a professional coach to teach your son how to hit, how to 
whatever deficiencies they have. And I, uh, I had a friend of mine, uh, she, her son went to the, our rival high school here in Burleson, Centennial High, and uh, she passed me a number. And I called the I called a guy, and it turned out to be a Cecil Ashby, former Major League Baseball player, great brother, great brother. And uh, we got together, and that was about when Zion was about 12 years old, 12, 13 years old, and we've been rolling ever since. And the reason I love Coach Espy is because, I'll put it bluntly, because he's black, and he knows the trials and tribulations the black baseball player has to go through. and he can impart that knowledge on my young men so that they can see what's ahead of them and make the decision if this is really what they want to do and learn from his mistakes that he's made and so that they could avoid those pitfalls. And, you know, he talks to them every day. It's not just about, you know, hitting the ball and learning the hitting mechanics, which is important, but he also gives them his, his story, his, the lessons that he's learned, the people that have helped him. And, that there to me is is the invaluable part of the lessons that that we go to every week is is listening to him talk listen you know letting all that soak in you know listening to the names that he talks about and the people that have that that helped him develop as a ball player and you can't you can't put a price tag on that you cannot put a price tag on that so you know he's he's we've written down things you know I've learned I've talked to coaches and everything and We've gone out and, you know, and, and I, push my, I push my children, you know, to the point where I want them to be able to go out and do it on their own. And, you, and I've taught them that you have to love the things that you have to love to do the things that you don't want to do to get, get better. You know, got to get up to go to the gym at five o'clock in the morning hit those weights. You got to get up there and run. You got to get out there and hit off the tee when you don't want to just those drills over and over and over again. And you will see that it'll get, it, it, it'll come to fruition for you on game day. No doubt. And uh, you were the one that turned us on to uh, coach SP as well. And everything that you said sums it up. Um, that's the reason that, that uh, I continue to uh, make sure that the Marcus uh, is talking to or receiving lessons, receiving that coaching. But Coach C- Cecil gives them a lot more guidance. And the thing about Cecil, and you, you'll probably agree with this, is he is tough. You know, yes. he when uh, DeMarcus started, he he had him almost in tears one day. But that was his, that's his tough love, and that t- ingrains uh, toughness in, in in your boys and as well as, as mine through the years. And if he can take that, then he has no problem taking – uh, tough coaching from anybody else. Uh, and if, if Cecil didn't care, uh, you know, he would have kicked him out a long time ago. So, exactly. uh, you know, I, shout out to Coach Cecil. I hope to get him on here pretty soon. I'm going to have to drag him down and get him. But, you yes, know, he's sir. so busy. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But uh, yeah, switching he's... gears, before uh, before we get out of here, uh, now Zion's uh, junior and senior year, senior year being cut short, uh, uh, we're talking about high school now. Uh, talk about his journey there. Uh, up until now and then uh, before we go we'll talk about some uh, some of the showcases that you went to because I think that story uh, trying to get to the next level needs to be told as well but uh, uh, finish his junior and senior year and then talk about the traveling to showcases you know myself as well and you know we conversated about this uh, back and forth all the time trying to find the right places to go through I think a big thing uh with baseball is trying to get them in front of the right person, the right colleges, uh, visiting colleges, uh, you know, taking them to specific camps on campus, uh, being invited. Uh, you know, we, we, yourself and myself, we went to several times where they just got an evaluation and we were expecting, Hey, you know, maybe they would talk to them a little more, uh, but, uh, finish his high school and then talk about that. Yes. Junior year probably was one of his, his best year. I, I, I think senior year would have been his best year, but COVID just ruined that. But we, uh, the team made it to the second round of the playoffs, and uh, I'll never forget, we had probably the best high school baseball game I've ever seen. We played the eventual state, the eventual 5A state champ in, uh, in Colleyville Heritage with the famed Bobby Witt. Bobby Witt. And, uh, right. yeah, so we, we were at, um, at the uh, 
the old Ranger ballpark we played there. That that was a, it was a great atmosphere. I mean, there were major league baseball players there. There were baseball scouts there. It was it was pretty awesome. We ended up losing the game 2-0. Uh, Bobby Witt hit a home run off a of 0-2 hanging curveball. That's when I realized, oh, that kid is the truth. Special. And, and, <laughs> and, uh, and then he got he uh, he hit another 0-2 or 1-2 um, triple. And then when he got to third, and then uh, the ball got away a wild pitch, got away probably no more than 20 feet from the catcher. He came in and scored on that. And uh, Zion's impact on the game, so we ended up getting a walking a runner, and Zion came in to pinch run. He got the steal. And to this day, yes, I'm biased, I know, but to this day, Zion was safe because he got in there, and then you can hear Bobby Witt yelling to the umpire, he's out, right? He's out, he's out. And then the umpire, and that was that was the third. <laughs> oh, man, the crowd went crazy. Right. But, uh it was a great game, and we pl- Burleson High played the eventual state champs the toughest. We they won two zero. They weren't expecting that, and I was really proud of that team. And so, and 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 that pretty much, uh, and that ended his junior year. Uh, senior year, his second to last. As a matter of fact, his last game was playing against uh, D's team. Right. So we we were there, but the game before that, he hit a he hit a home run. We were in uh, South Grand Prairie playing in a tournament. It was a back to he was, he was the second uh, hitter in a back to back home run uh, in a home run play, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful, right to left field. So, so then, but backtracking though, like you said, going back to showcases, that was grueling. Again, you know, not to say Zion was a guinea pig, but we didn't learn. We didn't know anything, so we were learning as we were going along. So we were getting information. And you and I were sharing information. And, you know, we were talking to other people, so we did research on the Internet. And uh, we were going to – we'd either go to these college showcases. We've gone all the way out to San Angelo. We've gone down to Houston. Uh, we've gone to, to Stephen F. Austin. Pretty much we were rolling all over Texas. That's when you find out Texas is a huge state. <laughs> and uh, we were doing those, or we would do those uh, private, you know, those PBR uh, – uh, showcases and, uh, and 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 all those all those other private organizations and uh, it was grueling. It was grueling. Long days, long days. And uh, what I've learned from that is you have to pick and choose, and uh, you have to really get in contact with these college coaches on a personal level before you just show up at show up to these showcases and just hope that your child will just stick out and just you know like some fairy tale dream. Oh, that's the kid right there. I want him. And next thing you know, he's playing four years and then the majors. It doesn't happen like that. It doesn't happen like that. It's grueling. You're you're on the road, back hurting, going down there for an hour. <laughs> and then you have to make sure that, you know, it, he could have a bad day at the, you know, during BP and then that's it. And you've put all that time and effort into it. So it 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 can be uh it it it's 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 hard. It's tough. It's tough. So but you learn. We learned from that, and now that he is, you know, so like, like I said earlier, he has. Uh, we decided to uh, put him into the uh, to one of those prep programs, okay. Texas Post Grad down in College Station. Okay, and he's getting himself better. He's getting himself better, you know, working at a college level, but without having to worry about is he going to get enough playing time and you know all the rigors of uh, you know of of a. Of a of, of a college program, of a college baseball program. Well, it sounds like uh, he's he's progressing well. And uh, the thing about uh, Zion is he is a hard worker, like you've expressed, uh, you know, throughout, uh, you know, the interview. I mean, that's what it takes to get to the next level. And he's on the cusp of doing that as well. Now, before we get out of here, uh, you have, in my opinion, and, and you probably would agree, now take your dad hat off and yes. put your coach hat on. Now, yes, IVL, sir. he's uh, 14 yeah. or 15 now? 14 years old, a freshman in high school. Okay. I've seen some of the uh, some of his film in the last, I would say, uh, year. Let's say within a year. And to me, in my opinion, and I'm, I'm not being biased here just because, uh, you know, we have a history. I think he's going to be one of the better players in our area before it's done. You know, he's progressing. Uh, you know, he's left-handed. 
Uh, he's he has more than one tool, as they say in baseball jargon. Uh, yes, he pitches. Uh, he can play any place. Uh, I think in the field that he wants to probably maybe not third base because he's a lefty, but definitely he's going to be tall enough to be at first. He can play in the outfield. Uh, this young man looks to be on his way. Uh, talk about his game a little bit and his progression so far. Yes, Aviel is is uh, Aviel is my baby, but he ain't, he's not a baby. Five, <laughs> <I> know, <laughs> five ten, one hundred and sixty two pounds, built like a tank. And uh, true lefty, and uh, he has learned from this. Right. Unbeknownst to me, he was paying attention to everything his older brother was going through. Right. And so he learned from it. He picked it up really quick, really quickly. And he is, uh, he is it's amazing. I, I I'm I I want to temper what everyone else is saying because trust me, you're not the only one to say that. <laughs> but so you know, I don't. You know, I, I'm really excited what the future holds for him. Okay. But uh, he he is looking really good, and uh, you know he he goes to Cecil also, and right. uh, just to see Cecil Cecil's eyes when he talks about my son, you know, I really enjoy that because again, like I said earlier, he is a that's a pro. If if a if a pro is saying it, you know, I got to believe it, right? Exactly. So, so you know, there's a lot of potential there. So. We're doing what we can to help him realize his potential. And uh, the one thing I do love about his game is his work ethic. You know, he he can he can hit the ball a mile. He I mean he's fast. I mean he's got quick feet, quick hands. He's 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 working to get all the tools necessary. But what he's doing is he is working. I'll give you a quick story. One day this summer, you know, one of these uh, hot ninety something degree days is real humid. I'm looking for him, and I keep hearing this stud coming from outside. And uh, I go to look outside on the sidewalk, and I see him outside. He's just sweating, and he's working off the tee, hitting those plastic yellow and uh, black plastic baseballs, just working on his game. And he, after we'd empty the bucket, it's about 20 to 25 balls in there, he would do about 25 push-ups and then get back up and start swinging again. And he'd stay out there for about an hour, hour and a half, working in the grueling sun. Never prompted to do that. Did it, did it on his own. I'd see him just grab his, his uh, headphones, the bucket, his bat, and go out there and go to work. And so that right there tells me he, he stays at it. He's going to go far in this game. So I want everybody to look out for him too, because I think, like you said, he he's going to be one of the better players here in the DFW area. So, he, as long as he keeps working and keeps getting better, uh, he he's going to be the truth. He's going to be the truth. I agree, um, and that's that was why I wanted you to come on today, and I appreciate you giving us a little time here on the On Your Mark show. Uh, you have set up Twitters for both kids, so before you get off, go ahead and give. Uh, those Twitter so everybody can check them out and be able to find them online. Okay, so Zion's Twitter is ZWeb14. That's his Twitter handle. And and Aviel's Twitter is oh, you put me on the spot there with that one. <laughs> That's okay. You got a little time. Go ahead and find it. Yeah. We, yeah, his, we want him to find his, it. His uh yeah. His Twitter is oh man, come on. <laughs> <laughs> all good, man. You got you got to stay ready to be ready. It's all yeah, good. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. No yeah, doubt. his his is his is a a his is uh a Webster fourteen a Webster. So it's both of us. So all right. So so right. we should be good on that. So yeah, just follow them. And then, plus, he's probably the only Avio Webster out there in Twitter Twitter universe anyway. No doubt. So no doubt. So, no doubt. so that so that's them. Well. That's great, man, and I appreciate you joining again. This is Franklin Webster. Um, he's a good friend, like he said, family, and he's uh, a father to two of the better players from the DFW area. His younger son, remember those names, Zion Webster and Avia Webster, uh, is on a come up freshman right now. Uh, you'll see those guys pretty soon at the next level in baseball. So but we'll take a quick break on on your mark show on 105.4 RPWP, thepostradio.com, and we'll come back with the next segment. 